We we'll begin the Gemara today on the bottom of Daf Yutesa Mudbeis, five lines from the bottom. Shalchole Lamarokva. So Shalchole Lamarokva. The following halacha was sent to Marokva. Adar Hasamuch Lenissen. The month of Adar that's near Nissen, so that's whether it's a regular year, that you have one Adar, or if it's a Shonam Uberes and you have the second Adar. Lo'olam Chaser. It's always 29 days. Most of Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman asks on this from the Mishnah that's going to be in, 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 right here in the Mesechta later. So it says, Ashnei Chadoshim, for two months, Mechalel and Esa Shabbos. The Edim that come to testify about the new moon that they saw are allowed to desecrate Shabbos to come de- and testify. Al Nisim Val Tishrei. For the month of Nisim and for the month of Tishrei because of the Yomim Toivim that are in these two months. That's what it says here. Now, if you're going to say that the month of Adar, sometimes it's 29 days, sometimes it's 30 days, so that's why they're Machal Shabbos, in order for the, the Edim to come and let Bezdin know when, when it is. It could be 29, it could be 30. But if you're going to say, that anyways, the last Adar, the Adar, or the, whether it's the second Adar or the Adar that's near Nisan is always going to be 29 days and it doesn't make a difference if the Aden come or not. As Rashi says, even if the Aden won't come, we'll be, mechal, we'll be Mekadosh, that is the Chaydish anyways, so then Amai Mechal Alinon. Why do we allow the Aden to be Mechal Shabbos and let us know that they saw the new moon? Taisus over here in the bottom of the Yom, it says that you could ask a similar question, Benigayah, to the fact that Bezin sent out Shluchim for the month of Nisan to let everyone know when they were Makadash to Chaydish, you have the same question. For the month of Nisan, why do you have to send Shluchim? Everyone knows that Adar is 29 days. Okay, the Gemara is going to refute this opinion of yours, we'll see. So that's, uh, that's why we send out Shluchim for, tish, for Nisan. So the Gemara answers, Mishum, the mitzvah, Lakadash Alariya. True, Bezin is going to be Makadash to Chaydish anyways. But still, there is a mitzvah. The Torah says, "Achaydish is elachem reish chadashim." As we'll see soon in the Gemara, "Kazerei v'kadesh," that a person is supposed to a bezin. That is, is should, should rely on the edim. So it is a mitzvah to, to do it with the edim. So therefore, they come in our machal Shabbos. Okay. Now, this answer to the Gemara is very difficult to understand. As the Mefarshim ask, if so, it should be every month. Why dafkin nisan and tishrei? You're telling me that you really you don't need it for nisra. Nisan is just a concept of a mitzvah. So it's the same thing every month. Okay. The Gemara is eventually going to refute this whole thing. Let's see. Eked Amri, there's another opinion here that Omar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman didn't come to ask a question on this halacha that they sent Marukve, but he actually came to support him from this mission that we just quoted. That Afanana Mitanime, we can see this also from this mission that we learned here. Al Shnei Chadoshim Machal Lemesa Shabbos. There are two Chadoshim that were Machal Shabbos, Al Nisim Val Tishrei. One for Nisan and for Tishrei, that the Eidim are Machal Shabbos. So now, if you're going to tell me that the month of Nisan, and I guess the month by, by Tishrei as well, I mean, in other words, not, not the month of Nisan, the month of Adar, or the month of Elul, is always Chaser, it's always 29 days. <coughs> so whether the Eidim are going to come or not, the Bezin's going to be Mekadosh to Chaydish. There's no flexibility here. That being Mekadosh, the 30th day is going to be the first day of the next month. So Mishum Hachi Mechalalinon. That's why the Edim have to rush and come to the Bezin on time when they saw the Levana to tell Bezin about it. Why? The mitzvah Lekadish Alariya. Because it is a mitzvah that Bezin should do it Alpiariya. So since Bezin is planning on being Mekadish Alchaydish anyways, they, miss, they may miss this mitzvah. Because they may, they may be Mekadish without the Edim. So therefore the Edim should hurry even on Shabbos to come and tell Bezin they saw the new moon. If you're going to say that when it comes to Adar, it could be 29 days, it could be 30 days, there's more flexibility here. So Why would Adam have to rush and be Mechal Shabbos to come to the Bezden? Even if Bezden doesn't have the Adam today on the, on the 30th day, so then they'll be Ma'abr, they'll wait until Venekat Shilamacha. And they'll be Mekadosh HaChadosh tomorrow. So the, the, the Edom didn't come today, so they'll wait tomorrow. They'll be Mekadosh HaChadosh tomorrow. Bezin has that flexibility. It doesn't have to be today. So why, does the Edom, why do the Edom have to rush? But if, okay. if you say it's totally in, in Ria, mm-hmm. maybe he's asking a question over here. How, does, how do you have this? How do you have it? How do you have it? Sholach Lamar Ukva. Other than some of this is it's mm-hmm. always 29 days. Right. Maybe if it's the ha- other way around. If it's real, how do you get 29 days? It could be 30 days too. And a Hanami. So the Gemara here is going with the approach that you don't need Riyah. In order oh. for best to be Mekadosh to Chaydish, it's only a mitzvah. 
to be to use riyah, but you don't need it. Bezin can be mekadesh without the edim. Right? But the Gemara's question is, if Bezin has no flexibility, they must be mekadesh on the thirtieth day. So then the the, bez, the, the edim better hurry because otherwise Bezin's going to miss the mitzvah. But if Bezin could wait till tomorrow, so then the edim don't have to hurry. So then Maybe they're going to come tomorrow and they'll be mekadesh tomorrow. So then there's never a month for thirty days. No, no, the, the, <laughs> no. So the Gemara continues. The Gemara says, yoim So the question, or the, the cheshman that Rav Nachman is saying here, the raya that is actually, that he's bringing to the, the halacha of Marukve. So yeah, if Shabbos comes out on the 30th day, so now we say there's no reason for the Be'edim to hurry. Because who says Bezin's going to be Mekadosh to Chodesh today? They're going to be Mekadosh today. They can wait till tomorrow. Hachanami, you're right. They can wait till tomorrow. But Hacha b'mayaskin on the ikla yoyim shloishin ve'echot b'shabes. What happens if the thirty-first day comes out in Shabbos? So not, the mitzvah lekadosh al rii. So there's a mitzvah to be mekadosh with the rii of the edim. So then we understand why the edim have to come right away on the thirty-first day being Shabbos because this is the last time the bezin could be mekadosh to chaydish. And if the edim are not going to come today, they're going to be mekadosh to chaydish without the edim. So the, the, there's no raya here from this Mishnah. You're thinking that this Mishnah is speaking about a case when the 30th day is Shabbos. And therefore you're saying, why do they them have to rush, wait till tomorrow? The answer is no, but what's if the 31st day comes out on Shabbos? So then they them have to come even on Shabbos because otherwise the is going to be in the Kaddish without them. Okay, but now this whole Gemara, this whole Allah here is based on the fact that Bezin could be in the Kaddish without the Edim. But nevertheless, there's a mitzvah to be in the Kaddish of Pide Edim. And therefore, we allow them to be Mechal Shabbos for this mitzvah. But the Gemara now is going to refute this whole idea. Most of Rav Kahana, Rav Kahana asks on this. This is a continuation of that Mishnah that we just quoted. Kesha Mekadish, uh, sorry, sorry. Kesha HaMikdosh Kayam, when the Beis HaMikdosh is standing. <coughs> mechalalin Afal Kulon. So then, the Edim are Mechal Shabbos for all the months. Not only Nisan and Tisha when you have the Yom Tevim. Why? Mipnei Takona Sakarbim. Because there's carbonus, so they have to make sure that they bring the carbon on the right day of Rish Chaydish. Okay, so now what does it say here? The only reason that we're going to be Mechal the Shabbos on all the Chadashim is because of the carbonus. So, so I see here regarding all the other Chadashim that we're not allowing the Edim to be Mechal Shabbos because of this mitzvah. You're saying the only reason is the mitzvah. No, it's not because of the mitzvah. It says the reason is because of the Karbanis. So Nisan, the Tishrei Nami, when it comes to Nisan and Tishrei as well, Lav, Mishum the Mitzvah Lekadosh You can't tell me that really the Chodesh is set. It has a time. It's going to be only 29 days. Aye, why the Edim Mechal Shabbos? That's because of a mitzvah. You can't say that. We see here clearly from this mitzvah, sorry, from this Mishnah that is, that we're not relying on just this Indian of a mitzvah for the Edim to be Mechal Shabbos. So the Gemara explains, So now, if you're going to say that Adar, sometimes it's full, it's 30 days, and sometimes it's 29 days, that's why you have to be Mechal Shabbos. You have to know when the Chodesh is. The Edim are the ones that are telling you this. We're relying on the Edim. If you're going to say that the Adar is always 29 days, so what did we want to say before? But still, it's a mitzvah to be Mekadosh. But no, now we see that just the mitzvah is not enough of a reason to be Mechal Shabbos. So am I Mechal Alinon? Why when it comes to Nisan and Tisha, are we Mechal Shabbos? If anyways, the, the, it's set that the 30th day is going to start the new month, so you don't, you don't have to be Mechal Shabbos. Gemara says to Yufte. So this Taka refutes this statement that was brought to Mar Ukve that Adar is always 29 days. It's not so. We see over here that it must be that Adar is sometimes 29 days, sometimes 30 days, and that's why the Edom and Machal Shabbos, and that's also the reason why we have to send out Shluchim for the month of Nisan, and so on. However, Taisus brings that, this, that, that nevertheless today that is the halacha. In the time of the Beis Hamikdash, when they were Makadash al Piri'iyah, so then it could be either 29 or 30. But today, Adr Hasamuch Lenissin is always 29 days. Kiyasu Ulama, when Ola came from Eretz Yisrael, and so he reported to the Yidin in Bavel, he told them, Ibru al Elo. He let them know that that year, Elo, they added a day, a 30, they made Elo 30 days, even though Elo is usually 29 days. And we had before in the Gemara, from the time of Ezra, they always had a 29 days, but there was one year, they made El 30 days. And Omar Ullah, then Ullah said about this, Yodi Chavrin Pavloi, do, the, do my friends here in Bavel know my Tivusa of Dinam Badayu, what kind of favor we did with them? So the Gemara now explains, my Tivusa, what was the big favor that they, that they made El 30 days? 
So Ula Omar, so Ula himself explained, Mishum Yarkaya. The reason is because of the vegetables. What's the union of the vegetables? What happens if you have Shabbos and Yontif that are together? So in those times, there's no refrigeration, there's no ways to preserve food. So if you have vegetables that you pick before Shabbos on Friday, and you have to eat it 48 hours later, or, or not mamish 48 hours later, you have to eat it on Yontif, and it's, it's going to get wilted, and it's, you're not going to have fresh food to eat for Yontif. So if you make Adar on the 30th day, you're not going to have Shabbos and Yontif together. There'll be an, a, an extra day there to separate between the Shabbos and Yontif. So Pashat for the food, to have fresh food. That was one, one pshat, what the favor was. Rabbi says the favor is for if a person passes away. What happens if a person passes away? So this is if Shabbos and Yom Kippur fall out together. On Yontif, as we'll see soon in the Gemara, you can have a guy bury someone. But for, for Shabbos and Yom Kippur, if it falls out together, so then a mace is left to wait almost 20, uh, 48 hours until he's going to be buried. So for the honor of, of the dead, it's a big toyeles if they push off Yom Kippur one day, so now you can bury him after Shabbos. So Gemar explains, my Benayu, what is the difference between these two opinions? Ike Benayu, the difference is, Yom Kippurim Shechali Yisachah Shabbos. When Yom Kippur comes out on Sunday, right after Shabbos, the one that says that the, the benefit here is for a person that passed away to bear, be able to bury him. So you'll add a day to, to Elul to be able to bury him. So you shouldn't have to wait two days. But the one that says that it's for the food, you're not eating on Yom Kippur. So when does he need this food? Not on Yom Kippur itself. He needs it at night. Matzi Yom Kippur. So Lorta at night, Matzi Yom Kippur, Torah Chomaisi. If he wants fresh, fresh vegetables, let him go out in the field and uh, let him pick fresh vegetables. So therefore, and then it's not needed. But the Gemara now says, The opinion that says that they would add a, a day to, to Elul for the fresh food, let them also add an extra day for the issue of the uh, dead person that uh, you have to be able to bury him. In other words, what the Gemara is saying is that opinion that's concerned about fresh food is not concerned about the honor of, 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 a de- of the dead. Obviously, he should agree to this. So therefore, the Gemara says, yeah, he does agree. So the Nafkemina will be the other way around. Elo Ikebenayu, the Nafkemina would be Yomte Fasamach Shabbos. When you would have Yom Tov fall out right near Shabbos. Beimelofana, where the Yom Tov would be Friday. Beimelachra, where the Yom Tov would be on Sunday. So now, the one that says that there's an issue with having the fresh vegetables, they'll add a day to the month of Elul not to have the Yom Tov and the Shabbos right near each other. But the opinion that says that we're only adding a day to be able to bury the dead, so as far as burying the dead, that when Yom Tov and Shabbos fall out on the same day, that's not an issue. That you could have a guy bury someone on, even on the first day of Yom Tov. So now the Gemara explains, so this mandoma that says that the issue is of burying a person, does he not hold of this concept of fresh food? So the Gemara says, no, he doesn't. Well, the mandoma, Mishum Isaya, the one that says that the issue is to be able to bury a person, Labre Mishum Yakaya, why doesn't he hold of this concept to add an extra day for the fresh food when it's Shabbos and Yom Tov together? So the Gemara says, the answer is, Efshe Bechamimi, you can take the vegetables, that might get wilted and you put it into warm water, you can refresh it. You can refresh it and therefore it's not such a big concern. So the Gemara now explains, Why did Ola say that this is a favor that they did in Eretz Yisrael? For who? For the people of Bavel. Why is it only a favor for us? This is a favor for the people in Eretz Yisrael as well, for, for someone that passes away or for the vegetables. Why only for us in Bavel? And for the Gemara, no, in Bavel it's worse conditions. Lididon chavilon alma. For us, the world is very hot. Bavel is in a valley, it's low down, and therefore the air is much hotter, and therefore the, the vegetables become wilted quicker, and even for a, a person that's a that, dead body, it's also worse from such conditions. But lididu le chavilon alma. And Eretz Yisrael, it's not as hot, there's mountains, there's hills, and therefore over there, it's not such a big concern like it is in Bavel. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so now, what was the basis of everything that we were learning here? That sometimes, if there's a good reason, the Bezdin will add a date to the month of Elul. So the one now asks him this, Aini, is this true? But Vatani, Rabbi Bar Shmuel, Rabbi Bar Shmuel had said, Yochel, I would think, Kishem Shem Abrin just like if there's a need, you could add a month for the year. So, so too, you can be ma'abed the chaydish, which means to add a date to the month if there's a need. Tamad loimar. So the pasuk says, "Achaydish is elachem reish chadashim." This is the reish chaydish. What does hazem mean? Kazere the kadesh. 
when you see the new moon, you have to sanctify the new moon and you can't add any days. So there's no flexibility. Bezin can't uh, find reasons that might even be good reasons and just add a day. It doesn't work that way. So how can we Bechlal say that for these two reasons, Yarkaya, Mesaya, that you add a day? By the way, if anyone remembers what we learned in Sukkah, there's another reason why sometimes they added a day. They didn't want a Shana Rabbah to fall out in Shabbos. If anyone remembers. Okay. So the Gemara continues and says, Omarave, so Rav says, we have to read what the statement here that Rabbi Bashmul said differently. Loikashia. It's not a question. Here, what we're saying is that sometimes they added a day. And Kan Lakachay. What Rabbi Bashmul was talking about, not to add a day, but actually to be Makadash early. To, to be Makadash a day before the Adam came. And say that they saw the new moon. This is what he was saying. Yachal, I would think, Yishem Shemabrin is Hashanah Vesachaydish. That just like you're allowed to add a month to the year, and you're also allowed to add a month, a day to a month, that is. Litzaydich, if there is a need. Kach Mekadshin is Hachaydish Litzaydich. So you would think that maybe you're allowed to be Mekadash the Chaydish early, a day before the Adam come and see the new moon. Litzaydich, if there's a need. Tamad Loyma Chaydish is Elachem Kazerei the Kadesh, that you can't be Mekadash the Chaydish before you saw the new moon. You have to wait until you see the new moon. Then you can be Mekadash. If you saw the new moon, so then you could delay it a day. Because that's Kazerei Mekadash. You saw the new moon, you're just delaying it a day. But to be Mekadash early, you can't. So he said the only issue is not to be Mekadash early. Rabbi Shua ben Levi said this as well. They would intimidate the Edim if the new moon was, was seen on the 30th day, if they wanted to make the new Chaydish on the 31st day, so they would intimidate the Edim, then they, they, would, they, would, research, they would interrogate them and intimidate them that they should not be Mekadash or Chaydish on that day. But they did not intimidate the Edim if it's before the time that they should come and say Edus before they saw the new moon, Lakatshe to be Mekadash before the time. Now, what exactly does this mean? How are you intimidating the Adem before, uh, before the new moon? Right? So, I mean, what, you would intimidate the Adem to say a lie? To come and say that they saw the new moon before, before the time, before they saw it? So it's, it's very hard to understand this. So the Pnei Shor here says, either the Pshad is, yeah, they would say a lie, but the reason they're saying a lie is because Bezden had the Cheshbainus. They knew when the Maylod of the new moon was. So when Bezdin knows that the mail of the new moon was on the 30th day, Elamai, no Adam saw it, no one arrives until later, so they're going to be Ma'ayim on Adam, not sure who those Adam are, but they're going to have to have two people that they're going to be Ma'ayim on them and say, we saw the new moon. And it's not really a Sheker because Bezdin knows that there is a new moon. Either that's one shot or another shot the Pnei Yeshua says is sometimes you have Adam that saw something and they're not sure if what they saw is a new moon or maybe what they saw was really like clouds or something else, it was a star or something and they're not 100% sure and the Bezden would pressure the Adam to come and say that yeah, what you saw was the new moon because they want to be Mekadashet early, to be Mekadashet on the 30th day. That's what this means here in the Gemara. So Rabbi Shur ben Levi say, we intimidate Adam to delay the new Chaydish, to be Ma'aber, to add a day, but we don't intimidate the Adam to say Adam early. The Gemara asks on this, any is this true? But for Hashalach, let Rabbi Yehuda Nesiyah, let Rabbi Ami. So Rabbi Yehuda Nesiyah, so he sent to Halacha to Rabbi Ami. Have a Yehudin you should know. Shekol Yom of Shorab Yechenen, all the lifetime of Rabbi Yechenen, Hoyam Alam Deinu, he taught us, Ma'aymen ala Chaydish. Uh, ma'ayman, ala edim. You could be ma'ayim, you could intimidate the edim, ala chaydish, shaloy nira bezmanoi, lekatshay. If you have the chaydish, that it would, it would, the new moon was not seen in the right time. So you could be ma'ayim, you could intimidate the edim to be makadish early. Afalpi, shaloy ro'u. Even if they did not see the new moon, yaim ro'u They should say that they saw the new moon. So we see over here that not only would Bezn have the right, the ability to delay it, but they also are sometimes intimidated to aid him to make it early. So how are we explaining that the Rabbi Bashmul before said that we don't intimidate them to make it earlier? Here we see that he said, witnesses that they, that, that they did do this. But Abaye, so Abaye says, like Kashe, so there's no question here, Habe Nisan Tishrei. When it comes to Nisan and Tishrei, so because of the Yom Tovim and because of the reasons we said before, because of Yarkaya or Mesaya, the fresh food, or if there's a dead body, so over there, they could either delay it or they can make it a day early. Depends if, if Yom Tov is going to fall out on a Friday or on a Sunday. So over there, the Bezden will do either one. 
But when it comes to other Yomim Toivim, over there, Bezdin will only delay the Chaydish, but they will not make it a day early. This is one shot to explain what Rabbi Bar Shmuel said before. But now the Gemara brings a completely different shot. All right, so according to this shot that Rav is about to say, Rabbi Bar Shmuel, what was the first simple shot of what Rabbi Bar Shmuel said before? That when it comes to a month, there's no flexibility. You can't add to it, you can't subtract from the month. Only by a year could you add a month. But by a month, you can't change anything. So Rav sticks to that simple pshat that we had in the beginning. Rav Omar, Rav says, Ha, the Tony Rabbi Bashmul. This the Rabbi Bashmul says that there's no playing around with the month. Achedimi. That follows the opinion of Achedim that we had before. Achedim say the months are set. It's, there has to be all the months of the year. There are six months that are Malay, that are 30 days, and there are six months that are Chaser. And therefore, let's see, the Tanya, Acherim, Oimrim, Acherim, say, Ein bein atzeres la atzeres, ve'ein bein Rosh Hashanah la Rosh Hashanah, la Dalad Yom and Bulvat, the difference between the Shavuos of one year and the following year, as far as the days of the weeks are concerned. And the difference between Rosh Hashanah of this year and the following year is, is also the same thing, the days of the week, there's always a difference of four days. Right? So, Lamashal, if one year it's on a Sunday, so then the following year it's going to be on a Thursday. If it's a Shana Mu'beres, so there's another month, Chamisha. So then it's going to be five days of difference, right? So the, just quickly, what's the Cheshbon? We had this before. Cheshbon is because you have 354 days of the year. 350 days is 50 weeks. So if it would be 350 week, uh, days, 50 weeks, so then the Rosh Hashanah the following year would fall out exactly on the same day. But you have another extra four days, 354 days. Or if it's a Shana Mu'beres, it's 355 days. So therefore... The next year, it's going to be four or five days moved off. Okay, that's the opinion of Achedim. Now the Gemara brings an opposite opinion of what we had before. Before the Gemara was saying that it's easier for Bezdin to delay the new month than the Bezdin should come and uh, intimidate the Edim to say Edos to make it earlier. But now the Gemara brings the exact opposite. Rav Dimi min masni ipche. Rav Dimi from Nerda said the exact opposite. They would intimidate Edim if they did not see the new moon in the right time to come and say Edus, even though they did not see. But they would not intimidate Edim when the Edim saw the new moon and they want to delay the Chaydish to the next day. That they did not do. The exact opposite of what we said before. My time, what's the reason for this? So the Gemara says, the reason is because of what, the, way it's, the way it's going to appear to everybody, to people. Ha merzi kishikra. If the new if the Adam saw the new moon, so what does that mean? This, this new moon was, uh, appeared in a way that people saw it. So if these Adam saw it, probably many other people saw it as well. So if many other people saw it, and Bezan's not going to be in the Kaddish to Chaydish until the following day, what are people going to say? Hey, we saw the new moon today. Why is Bezan waiting till tomorrow? So, it looks like that Bezdin is being the Kaddish al Chaydish, a lie, in the wrong time. They're, they're, they're waiting until tomorrow. But, hi, loy Shikra. If Bezdin is the Kaddish al Chaydish a day earlier, no one's going to have any tainus, no one's going to say anything. That, but people are going to say, no, we didn't see it, but, but maybe uh, the Bezdin has Adam that did see it early. So, therefore, being the Kaddish al Chaydish early doesn't look like a lie, so that's something that the Bezdin will do. Here, the Gemara brings now another Indian, Benigayat, the Kiddush HaChadish Bechlal. So, Amar Shmuel, Shmuel said, Yochilna Litakuni, I could come and rectify, or I can take care of, Lakula Gaila, for all the issues that there are in Gaila, in Golis, when they're far from Eretz Yisrael. Meaning, Shmuel was saying, he knows exactly the cycle of the moon, and he knows exactly when the Mailad is, and therefore, he can tell us when the new Mailad every month is. He has it all cheshbined out. Like we have it today, actually. We have it today. We figured out exactly when the new uh, Mailad is. So Shmuel says he, he can figure it all out. Some say that Shmuel was saying this even in the time when there was still Mekadosh up here to Iyeh. And what Shmuel is saying is you don't have to wait until the Shluchim of Bezdin will come and let us know when they saw the new moon because he has it figured out when the new Mailad is and therefore he can tell us when the Bezdin was Mekadosh to Chaydish and we can rely on that. So now, after Shmuel said this, Amalei Abba, Avu de Rapsim Loy le Shmuel, Abba, the father of Rapsim Loy, said to Shmuel, Yodamar, son, you're, you're saying that you know it all. So, do you know, hi, Milsa de Tanya, do you know this that it says in the Braise, the Soyd Ibor? There's a Braise that's called Soyd Ibor. It has the secret of Ibors, the secret of the, how the calendar works. 
and uh, so this is a uh, huh? right. So the, the, all the secrets of but this is really you have to know astrology. You have to know the cycle of the moon and everything else to be able to know exactly when the new milad is. So there's a brayse that's called Saida Ibur, and this brayse is written in a very cryptic way. Chachamim wanted to keep this a secret. They didn't want people to second guess the Bezdin. So they kept it. It was, it was all written in a very cryptic way. So Abba was asking Shmuel, do you know what this statement in that Braisa means? There's a difference if the, if the new moon is before Chatzais or after Chatzais. What, what, what is it saying? Well, what's the relevance of this? Do you know what this means? Amalei, so Shmuel said, Loi. no, I don't know what it means. So Amalei, so Abba tells it, yada. so if you don't know what this means, yada mar. if the master doesn't know what this means, so then ikim milach renaisa yada mar. There's still some other things that you don't know about this either. Okay, what happened? Now the Gemara will bring a pshat in this statement of Sayyidah Ibu that we just quoted. So Kisalik Rab when Rab went to Eretz Yisrael, so Shalach Luhu, he sent back to his friends that were still in Bavel to explain. And he sent them two things. One thing he sent them was that the, the night and the day of the same day belong to the same Chaydish. You can't have the night of a previous Chaydish and the day of the next Chaydish. The night and the day is always part of the same Chaydish. That's one point he sent them. And then another point. And then this statement from the from the Sayyid Ibur that the father of Rab Simloi said, he challenged Shmuel whether he knows what this means. So here he explained now what it means. The Bezdin has to make a calculation regarding the birth of the new moon. And then the calculation is as follows. If they come to the conclusion that the birth of the new moon happened before Chatzais, be Yodua, so then it's known, Shanire Samoch Lishkiya Sachama, that close to Shkiya Sachama, which is about six hours later, that people will be able to see it. It becomes visible to people to see. The point of here is that at the time of the birth of the new moon, right at the birth, it's impossible to see. But it takes six, at least six hours to be able to see it. So if the, if the, uh, uh, the birth happened before Chatzai, so then you know that six hours later it's visible and people could see it before Shkia Sachama. If the birth of the new moon was not before Chatzai, so it was sometime after Chatzai, so then it's known that it, that it was not yet visible to anybody before Shkia Sachama. You have to wait at least six hours. That's the point there. At least six hours for the moon to be visible after the, uh, after the Moilid. We're going to actually see in a moment here in the Gemara that at the end of the month, in the beginning of the new month, there's a 24-hour period when the moon is not visible. Right? But at minimum, six hours after the Mailid is how long it takes for the moon to become visible. So now the Gemara explains, What's the relevance to know this, whether the Mailid was before Chatzais or after Chatzais, to know when it's going to become visible? So the Gemara, Maravashi, like Chushi Sada. What this is relevant for is to be able to refute uh, what the witnesses are saying. What happens if witnesses come and say, we saw the new moon before Shkia. And we know, according to Archish Bainis, that the birth of the new moon was after Chatzais. It's not yet six hours after the birth of the new moon. So we know that these witnesses are lying, or they, they, what they think they saw was not the new moon. So that's what this, well, that, that's what this is relevant for. Okay. This is the Pshat in the Gemara that Rashi here says, and this is the Pshat of most of the Rishonim. But there is another pshat that the Balamar says, just to mention it very pekitzer, this is a famous thing, the Balamar here says that this Gemara here is speaking about the fact that the world is round. And therefore, when you see the, the new moon in one place, so then there's another place that's six hours apart, and over there the, moon is gonna, the new moon is going to be seen six hours later, because the world is round. So the Balmar says that here is the source in the Gemara for this concept. The Gemara is alluding to this concept that because the world is round, so therefore the time, zone, the time zones in each place is different. And the Balmar, this is the only place where you have in the Rishonim where they discuss Befeidish, this concept that we know today that's called the timeline, the Kavatarech, because the world is round and therefore there has to be one place where you sort of skip a day. In, in, in Gemara, Befeidish, it's never mentioned, this concept. And the Rishayinim as well do not really talk about it. There's very few Rishayinim that talk about it. According to the Balamai, this Gemara here that's talking about when the Mailad is, and it's saying about six hours later, 
he says the Gemara is referring to the fact that the world is round and therefore the time zone is going to be removed six hours. Why didn't the Rishayim talk about this concept of Kavat Tarech? The Gemara for sure doesn't talk about it at all. Because in those times when all Yidin lived in one area, I mean, how far did Yidin travel? So it wasn't so relevant. But this is a, this is a real thing. And the, today, of course, there's Nafke Minis for this. A person travels from Australia and so on. Okay, so that's an interesting psalm in this Gemara. The Gemara here now brings another thing. This is similar on the same subject. Huh? If the Rebbe brings the Balamoy, it uh, could be. It could be the Rebbe's not signed to it in a letter, yeah. Amr Abzeira, Amr Av Nachman. Abzeira said in the name of Av Nachman, Chov Dalit Shoy Mechasi Sira. When they ended a month, in the beginning of the new month, there's a 24 hour period when the moon is covered. Now the Gemara explains it depends in which part of the world you are, which 24 hour period this is. Basically, the point that the Gemara is going to say here is the moon, there's, there's that moment when the moon completely disappears when the moon is between the earth and the sun, so then the moon totally disappears. So right before, it's not totally disappeared. It has a sliver of light from the sun. And right after the birth, it also has a little bit of light from the sun. But the thing is, before and after, the light is so minimal that we can't see it. Right? So the reason why there's a 24-hour period, and it's not just that moment, is because even before and after, it's also going to be too small for us to see. But exactly when the 24-hour period is, if the 24-hour period is before or after, so that will depend on which part of the world you are. And the Gemara explains. Lidi done for us people here in Bavel. So now, the Gemara is going to talk about Bavel in contrast to the people in Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is to the west of Bavel. The Gemara always refers to Eretz Yisrael as Madrava, as in the west. And Bavel is to the east. So now, Lidi done for us people that are in the east, in Bavel, Shisma Tika, so six hours at the end of the old month, that's when they can't see the new moon anymore. <coughs> and 18 hours from the new month, going into when the sun is already going into the new moon, new month, when the, there was a little bit of sliver of light from the new month, but there's 18 hours going into the new month that us here in Bava, we can't see it. But Lidithu, for the people in Eretz Yisrael, which are in the east, it's the other way around. Shis Mechadita. They can't see the new moon six hours after the birth of the new moon. And they can't see the new moon 18 hours from the old month. Now what's the reason for this? So Bekitzer, the point is, Rashi explains, the moon is traveling, it's rotating the earth, it's going from east to west. It's traveling from east to west, right? So therefore, the people in Bavel that are in the east, because the birth on the new moon takes place on the west, so for them, the visibility of the new moon is going to take much longer for them. Because they're on the east and the, and the birth happens on the west. So therefore, it's going to take them 18 hours to see the visibility of the new moon. On the other hand, the disappearance of the old moon is going to be much less for them because they are on the west. And the moon at the end of the month is on the west and therefore they can see it up until six hours at the end of the, when the moon is disappearing. And people in Eretz Yisrael, which are on the west, so it's the other way around. Because the birth of the new moon happens when it travels to the west of the sun, so that's closer to their, where they, their location is. So therefore, six hours after the birth of the new moon, they're going to see it. On the other hand, the disappearance of the moon, when it's coming from the east, which is further away from them, so there they're not going to see it for 18 hours. So it depends where in the world you are. If you're on the east or on the west, th that will depend where exactly the moon disappears from the visibility of the people in that area. <coughs> and then again, the Gemara says, Why is all this relevant? It's relevant to know these cheshbainas in order to know how to refute the words of witnesses that are lying to you. You have to know what their location is, and you have to know when the birth of the new moon was, to know exactly when the visibility was possible in that area. Now, another detail we had before, Omamar, Rab Zedah sent to Halacha, what did he say? Tzadach sheyehei, layla v'yoyim and achaydish. The night and the day is always in one month. There's actually another gears in the Gemara, or another way how to read the Gemara. Layla v'yoyim and achadosh. That the night and the day is part of the, has to be part of the new month. You can't divide that the night is the, from the previous month and the day is from the new month. So we know from where do we learn this. Rab Yechelen, Rab Yechelen says, I learned it from this that it says, Me'erev ad erev. When it comes to Yom Kippur, it says there in the Torah, Me Erev Ad Erev, that Yom Kippur is from evening to evening. So I see that the Yom Tif is from the night until the following night. So I see that night and day go together. Rish Lakish says, Ad Yom HaEchad Ve'esrim Lachaydish. When it talks about Pesach, and it talks about the mitzvah of, not, of eating matzah, or the, actually the Isra of not eating chametz, 
So what does it say? Until when are you not allowed to eat chametz? Until the end of the 21st day of Nisan. So I see over here that Be'erev, the Torah says that until the night of the uh, 21st day of Nisan, so it includes also until that night. My Benayu, what's the difference between these two sources? Abayom HaMashmoz Dershon Ike Benayu. There's taka no actual nafkemina between them. It's just a question of what the source is, but it's the same exact thing, that the night and day have to go together. And therefore when it comes to the Chaydish, you can't be Mekadosh the, the night to be from the previous month and the day to be from the following month. Rava, Ma Rava says, Chatzois Laila Ikebenayu. There is an Afkimina. The Afkimina is regarding Chatzois Laila. So Rashi explains what's this meaning of Chatzois Laila. If you learn out from Yim Kippur, May Erev, Ad Erev. So then over there by Yim Kippur, it goes from Shkia to Shkia. So that starts from the beginning of the night. We see that from the beginning of the night, it's part of the Yim Kippur of the next day. But if you learn it out from Pesach, so here Rashi says, when it comes to Pesach, so this Isser of eating Chametz only starts from Chatzais. Very interesting thing. Why? Because until Chatzais, then there's the Mitzvah to eat Matzah. Until Chatzais, the Mitzvah of eating Matzah is still connected to Erev Pesach, when they shech the carbon Pesach, and you eat the carbon Pesach and the Matzah until Chatzais. Then after Chatzais, there's no Mitzvah to eat Matzah anymore. Now starts the Isser of eating Chametz. When the Torah says, that until the 21st day and the end of Pesach, you're not allowed to eat chametz. That is the chametz that it's talking about over here, started by the beginning of Pesach by Chatzois. So over here we see that only from the Chatzois in the night is it connected to the days that follow. So what happens if Bezan wants to be Mekadosh the night and they want to be Mekadosh the first half of the night for the previous Chaydish? According to this opinion, the first half of the night could go on the previous Chaydish and then from Chatzois forward could go to the next Chaydish. Amen Abzeira, Amen Av Nachman, Avzeira said in the name of Av Nachman. Kol Sveike, any time when we have a doubt regarding when the Yantav is, because we don't know when they were Mekadosh to Chaydish, Lekamei Shadinon. So we always keep Yantav two days, but which two days do we keep? So for example, it comes Sukkis. You're going to keep Tezvav Tishrei Sukkis, and then Tezayin. Only the day ahead you're going to keep as Sukkis. Because of the Suffolk of the new moon, we're never going to keep it Yud Dalet, the day before. We have a Suffolk if it's Chavtes or Lamed, so then the Suffolk is always going to be Tezvav and Tezayin, but there's no reason to go a day back. So the Gemara says, Lememre, shall I say, the Chamesa Veshitza of Dinon. I always, if I have a Sveik the Yoyme, I don't know when the right day of the Yontav is, so I keep it the 15th day and the 16th day. Our base alloy of Dinon. But the 14th day, I never go a day back. So the Gemara asks, why not? Why don't they have a suffix? And also keep the 14th day to be Yontif. Why? Maybe it's possible that Elul was 29 days, and even Av was also 29 days, so now maybe it goes back a day before. So you should keep Yudal at Elul as well. So the Gemara answer is no. If there would be two months that were missing a day, there would be a call for this. Because usually Rashi brings regarding Nisan. Usually Tevis is what it's Chaser, and then Shvat is Malay, and then Adar is Chaser, right? They had a certain cycle. So if you would have two months that go together that are Chaser, this is something everybody would know about. And therefore, since you've never heard about this, you know that this is not the case. And we're never Chayshish that you maybe have to go a day back. Our Chashash is only maybe Bezn added a day. Instead of it being 29 days of Adar, or Elul, they added a day and it's a 30th day. So therefore, if you have a suffix about the Yomtev, you always have to go a day forward to keep the next day. But you never have to keep the day before, the Yudala, the day before.